I sometimes get accused that I'm being quite hateful in my video content, that I'm being a horrible person for questioning people's deeply held beliefs. My content is about doubt. Doubting extraordinary claims which have no evidence of any kind, extraordinary or otherwise. It's not hateful to criticise Islam. You're not hating on a religion by pointing out some elements of it which are not so pleasant. It's not hateful to question certain aspects of Christianity, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, and other relating beliefs. My problem seems to be that I question those who claim to have knowledge, even though there is no rational way they can say they know that they actually have knowledge. To claim you know something without confirmation, at least in some rational, testable way, is a question of faith. And so I question people's faiths. So what I try and do is question those who claim they know. Whether it's Colleen Thomas, who claimed to be the mother goddess, and made a great many claims about a great many things, which could not be confirmed, and time and time again, her prophecies failed. Or whether it's the Destiny Cult, which basically was run by a loon who lived on a farm in South Africa, who would rant in many videos about everyone else being wrong and him being absolutely right. Or for that matter, the people who believe in the Buru or Planet X. People who believe that the world's going to end or a great catastrophe is going to come about the 2012ers, and the like, who made radical claims which could not be confirmed, and when they made specific claims, they could be disproven. Or people like Gorilla199, and David Icke, and Alex Jones. Radical claims without evidence. Suggestion and belief the development of faith over ideas, selected data to prop up a failed hypothesis. And there are those who would take offence when I pointed out the cult characteristics in various beliefs, and what to look out for, what to be wary of, in terms of certain cult-like elements within religion. The A Mighty Wind cult and its aggressions, and its critiques, and its fundamentalism, which opposed atheists and theists alike, as it tried to say that its belief following a single leader, a so-called prophetess, was the only right way. And on occasion I even mock in my videos called Mostly Bullshit, a parody of Ghost Hunters and Most Haunted. I basically point out that the people who believe in it, or at least seem to believe in what goes bump in the night, are basically, well, acting very foolishly, uncritically, without reason. They're not testing they're assuming, and the psychics and mediums who get involved in that ghost hunting or paranormal investigation industry are simply mentally masturbating to the ideas that they hold dear. Of course, I've criticised Osho and the organisation that grew around him, a guru who found popularity in the 70s and the 80s, and died in the early 90s, and basically stripped people of their individuality through brainwashing, 
They were convinced that they had to give up all material goods and give all their money to the guru. And of course, typical hypocrisy, where the guru could have luxuries of any kind, including a hundred cars. But for the people, they were living in simple robes of red and orange and wearing sandals and meditating for day upon day, having lots of sex with people without choice, as well as having vigorous exercise sessions, limited diet and very little sleep. Of course, I did one video on Sister Sharon Roach, a woman who claims to be an end times prophet, and for the right price, she can make you a profit too. And I'm sure she's profiting from that. One of my consistent points is, you don't need a guru. You don't need to follow. Especially when there is no real evidence given. Mysticism, persuasive arguments, for those who are faithful already, isn't enough. You need evidence. Faith is not evidence. And of course, I've done a few videos on the Galactic Federation of Light. The idea is that aliens, an alien federation in fact, is working with and cooperating with ascended masters and angels. But there are also dark forces and indeed most of the believers seem to say a new world order run by greys and possibly reptilian aliens. So in some ways, some similarity to David Icke theories. I've also mentioned messages from beyond. Those who claim to be psychic. Mediums. Channelers. Gurus. Prophets. Or communicate with aliens on some well, mental level. It's in your head. You don't agree on the details. Different organisations disagree massively, and the ones who do agree, typically, read from the same literature. Of course, I made a few responses to Ashiana Dean, a woman who calls herself Ashiana Dean, although that's not her real name. And she claims that she's had contact with all these higher dimensional forces, and yet she fails also. Like so many gurus. Like so many supposedly enlightened people. There are Christian organisations like Kingdom Warriors, who claim the end is nigh, and make a great many videos saying when and where events of the end will come. But of course, their prophecies always fail. My critique of Falun Gong, otherwise known as Falun Dafa, which was founded by Master Li Hongji, although I'm sure I'm pronouncing his name wrong, his organisation has many characteristics which are very cultic in their nature. But of course, the people who went to that video and left comments commented that I was utterly wrong. And also... They fail to recognise my point that I'm talking about the founder and leader. Not every single place where people practice. So people practising Falun Gong or Falun Dafa in other parts of the world, of course, are going to have different experiences. But when it comes down to the leadership and the donations being given to this leader of this new religion, of course, we're talking about characteristics which are very much cult-like. Of course, there's Derek Akora, the famous medium, who claims he talks to the dead. And yet, his evidence is mostly him stumbling around in the dark, talking in a funny voice, claiming to be in trance as a spirit takes him over. And of course, there's David Icke who claims that reptilians rule the world, the Illuminati is real, there's a hybrid bloodline, 
that a great many conspiracies like Princess Diana being killed were in fact carried out by the monarchy, who are reptilians, and other various stories. But of course, his evidence is quoting other conspiracy theorists, or taking certain information out of context. So when you look at the information in context, his conspiracies fall apart. A lot of the gurus are simply failures. That's all they are. And of course, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, calling himself Brian Yahweh, claims to be God, having achieved absolutely nothing with his life other than an internet cult where he can live quite comfortably on donations. Of course, mostly, I want these sorts of people to get serious psychological help, to get themselves back to mental health. Otherwise, their life will continue to be a deluded misery. A glamour model and failed reality TV star, Tila Tequila, who has a YouTube channel, put up only a few months after a suicide attempt, a bunch of videos about New World Order and other paranoid ideas, claiming the reason why her career was not going as well as she would have hoped was because of a Freemasonic Illuminati, running Hollywood and running the entertainment industry. People who say this, without evidence, and simply because they can't deal with reality, need some serious psychiatric assistance. After all, there is no shame in getting help if you need to. When it comes down to the Georgia Guidestones, many people get incredibly paranoid because they've been told on websites and in books that they mean a great deal. Of course, people like Alex Jones and David Icke would say it's evidence of New World Order, which leads to it getting vandalised many times a year. Of course, persuasive arguments and playing upon people's general ignorance is enough to ensure that people believe ridiculous things. A good example is a man called Ron Spencer, who basically fools people that he is the latest incarnation of the Buddha and Jesus, rolled into one, giving himself the <laughs> modest title of Buddha Maitreya. He claims that his specially made devices and pendants will remove all negativity, allowing you to embrace your spirituality. He claims to talk to angels and archangels, to ascended beings and previous Buddhas, to have communicated with different dimensions and realities and worlds. He has meditation centres. Of course, playing the mystic and sounding like you know what you talk about is enough to convince the willing. And if you don't know very much about Buddhism and other ancient spiritualities that he plays upon, you won't realise he's talking a load of rubbish. In many ways, the search for meaning, for some kind of greater truth and purpose in your existence, is a sign of insecurity. And so many people cling to the idea of comfort, being comforted by a pleasant view of reality. Many people turn towards mediums. Many people seem to believe that mediums can supply evidence of the afterlife, of survival of the personality after death. But what most people do, they accept what they're given. They're told by a medium something quite general, and they find where it fits. And the medium need not have any paranormal ability. All they need to do is give out what people want. Comfort. The idea that their relatives, their loved ones are close. There are tricks of the trade, and if you learn a few, 
and do a bit of research, the next time you go and see a medium or a psychic, you'll realise how they use the very same techniques. And the famous mediums even have planted people in their audiences. They invite clients. They might even stay with a friend who works for a local spiritualist church. And so they do a special event at the spiritualist church and basically give out a couple of tickets as a prize for a raffle at the end. So they know who they're going to. They know that there'll be people in the audience who are willing to accept most things. And so they don't really need any special ability at all. Other people direct their need for comfort towards people like Peter Popoff. So they've lost all their relatives. They're practically crippled by arthritis. But they go along to a faith healer like Peter Popoff and due to their faith, due to their belief, they make themselves temporarily better off. They force themselves to walk whereas before they needed to remain in their wheelchair. It's only after the adrenaline rush that they eventually wear back down and become wheelchair bound once again. And of course there are many others. Some people prefer Paul Begley and his prophecies of the end. The end is near, so all you good people, you're going to be raptured. Enjoy. It's the same sort of line as Harold Camping, but without the precise date. Of course, many gurus and cult leaders people cling to are very often mixing together all sorts of ideas. Ideas of Jesus and Christianity with New Age and ancient aliens. You name it. Because they figure the more they mix into, the more they capitalise on, the more attention they'll get, and more money. Which is usually true. The now deceased cult leader, psychic Sylvia Brown, she actually ran her own belief system, claiming it was Gnostic Christianity. She believed in both a mother and father god and had other mystical ideas linking to her belief. And it proved popular. She made many tens of millions of dollars over the years. She sold a great many books which saturate the market. So it can work as a business model. If you know what you're doing, if you know what you're after, and you push that agenda, it works. But people find comfort in it. But it's a mistaken comfort. It's not about really dealing with reality. It's about avoiding dealing with reality. In fact, with some of these gurus, some of these leaders, some of them are obviously after the money. They probably don't believe it at all like Sylvia Brown, whereas others actually believe their own bullshit, like Matreya Miranda, nowhere near as successful, but still making enough money to live as a guru, calling herself the feminine Christ. Maybe some people fall between, but then again, I suppose in many cases it does come down to the money. Maybe it's more like Scientology. You're paying a high price for something that means very little. And it's all about gathering money for the organisation. But maybe people do believe it. I'm sure there's many people in Scientology who do believe the bullshit they take on. And they pay the money because they believe it. And when they leave that belief, if they do, they must feel like they've turned their back on their higher teachings. It's not like everyone's easily convinced, obviously, but some people want to believe, even if they can't be convinced with ease. And so they go along to something for comfort, which uses some kind of technique. A technique like Wendy.com uses. Wendy, who appeared on Penn & Teller's Bullshit, 
claims that she can cure cancer with hypnotic therapy or give men a larger erection or cure other conditions, heart disease, you name it. Her website is full, wendy.com. And it's full of bullshit therapies, but people who wouldn't otherwise believe it could be done try and make it seem to be more real, at least to them, by going along for a therapy. And it's the same with Reiki and with faith healing and all these other therapies, homeopathy, flower remedies, crystal healing, the list goes on. People believe in it or want to believe in it. And so when they manifest some results, any results, it's because of them. There's an expectation. And when people don't have an expectation, nothing happens. And when people are going against the expectation, the opposite can happen. Because people create it themselves, the effects. A placebo, or anti-placebo, they create the phenomena that they want to believe. But it doesn't actually cure cancer, or give you a bigger knob, It just simply means that you think these things might have happened. The problem with therapies and techniques within New Age and alternative therapies is that it sounds like science, but it's not science. It's anything but science. Anyone can create methods. Methods do not automatically mean it's scientific method. But of course, people run with the idea of the science behind it and the scientific terminology being used. And you end up with ridiculous individuals like Deepak Chopra, who claims that because there is consciousness in the universe, the universe has consciousness. But of course, provides no evidence, merely asserts the idea and plays around with scientific terminology. But of course you have people like spirit science who then come along and spin a bunch of nonsense, new age, ancient alien rubbish without any proof, merely quoting various psychics and mystics. And they make it sound sciencey by adding in scientific terms and distorting information. That's all there is to it really. Distorting information is key. If you can take a few bits of information and make it seem to fit your belief, it might seem to be true to those people who don't know better. And that's the premise on which these people operate. The therapists, the people who claim that the universe has consciousness, and the people like spirit science who try and make out that their new age bullshit is science. They're basically pseudo-scientists who are dressing up their mysticism in scientific language. So-called mainstream religion tries to do the same. You have Muslims who take the Quran. They take a few passages from the Quran and try and make out it's scientific. Many Christians do the same. As well as with creation science which is merely a rebranding of creationism. They try and make out they have evidence for creationism, but they're using more or less the same old arguments of creationism. There's nothing new. And once again, they select data. They, through intention or not, carry out a deception. It's a bizarre thing that so many people out there seem to think because people have experiences and there are things which are unexplained, things that are mysterious, that there must be some kind of supernatural reality. And of course, these people propose that their belief is the true belief. Now, of course, when they propose that their belief is the true belief, they have no evidence. Nothing that can be called evidence in serious discussion. They have faith that a book or an idea is true. That something is correct. 
so they might believe that the Quran and Muhammad is the correct path, that Jesus and the Bible, or that Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon, or for that matter, L. Ron Hubbard and Dianetics is the true way. They might believe that, but they can't prove it. Until we have a reason to believe, there's no reason to assume that Derek Cora is a genuine medium. That the Long Island medium has genuine powers. That the Dalai Lama is indeed enlightened. That the Book of Mormon is the word of God. Or the Prophet Muhammad was the prophet for God. We have no reason to assume any of these things. We have no reason to assume a young earth without evidence. We have no reason to assume that Eckhart Tolle is a truly wise man as a guru, or that Alex Jones has the truth about a global conspiracy, or that reptilians rule the world, or that Maitreya Miranda is indeed the new Christ. We have no reason to assume, so why on earth should we? Until there is reason to believe something to be factually true, we should withhold belief.